When you think of a green dive watch, which watch comes to your mind? I bet it's the Rolex Hulk. But sadly, most of us will not have the chance to own that watch. The Hulk has been discontinued and the aftermarket price keeps climbing and climbing and climbing with no end in sight. But fear not because there is an abundance of copies and clones on the market. But if you want something with more originality, then any type of clone might not be your cup of tea. Rather, it could be better to look into an homage piece like this one. This is a Seiko SNE579P, an Asia exclusive model. Today, we'll put this cheap one to one clone head to head with this homage and let's see which one comes out on top. Let's get into it. If you would like to see more fun, long term independent watch reviews, and the occasional head to head video, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. Oh, and most importantly, comment. It really helps bring more viewers to this video. You can also follow me on Instagram and come along on my watch collecting journey. Enjoy. Okay, there will be a lot of confusion on what is an homage or what is a clone. So before I go any further, let me clarify that and make sure we are on the same page. Here is my definition. Clone type 1. This is a regular clone. It comes about when a watchmaker copies the design of a watch with little to no alteration and slaps their logo on it. There is no air of authenticity or originality from these watches. However, they are not made with any sinister intention in mind. They are not made to fool anyone and if you buy one, you know exactly what you're getting. They may or may not be cheaply made and some people might actually find value in owning these pieces. An example of this would be a Sang Matang 62MAS Diver, which is a clone of the 62MAS Diver from Seiko. Clone Type 2. This is a one-to-one -one clone, and it is exactly what you're seeing right here. These types of clones can be used for sinister purposes. Because they are exactly the same as the original, they can be used to trick people into buying inferior products and are illegal in most countries. On the other hand, we have an homage watch. An homage watch is a watch that is inspired by the design of another watch. You see some design references here and there. But at the end of the day, there will be more original elements than a copied one. These watches can stand on its own and be called an inspired design rather than a clone. For example, this Seiko that I'm holding is an homage watch, not a copied watch. Sound off in the comment below and let me know if you agree or disagree with me. If you disagree, share with us why. Now, let's move on to the comparison. Let's look at the one-to-one -one Rolex clone first. At first glance, I wouldn't be able to tell that this is a clone, especially because I'm not a Rolex owner. Although I have handled a few authentic ones in the past, what caught me by surprise is the feel in my hand. This clone is substantial. The watch head and the bracelet seems equally well made. In fact, the whole thing feels great in the hand. But once I took a closer look at the watch, I saw a cloudiness in the crystal. None of my other watches, whether they are sapphire or normal crystal, has exhibited this problem before. Not even my Winter Seiko watch, which is about um, 50 years old now. Next, I flipped the watch over and to my surprise, I saw something that I've never seen in other watches before. Rust. <laughs> well, this watch is rusted. The bracelet has started to rust. To me, this signifies that it is made of a lower grade stainless steel, but the watch head itself is rust free. So it could be made of something a little bit better. Thank God, and I hope it doesn't rust. Continuing with the bracelet. The screw in the links are immovable. As you can see from the tool mark, I tried to unscrew it to resize it, but it just wouldn't budge. Moving on to the glide lock. This thing works, but it is very sticky. The same can be said for the crown. The screwing action is gritty and sticky. This watch is very sticky overall. Last but not least, the loom. Um, well, there is no loom. What the f***? These are things that you would definitely not find on an original, let alone a quality homage or even a branded clone like the Steinhardt. Well, I don't want to bash it too much. So let's look at some of the good things on this watch. 
the bezel lines up nicely, the click is confident and there is no backplay. The dial looks great. As do the handset, indices and the printing. As for the movement, I couldn't find anything particularly bad about it. It operates smoothly and wine like the NH35. But I cannot confirm this. That's it about this one-to-one -one clone. Let's flip the table and look at the Seiko. At first glance, this thing looks awesome. Despite the clear inspiration we can see from the sub, it still has many quirks and differences to make it able to stand on its own. The first difference being the green ring on the crown, second, the step dial, third, the three sector dial, fourth, it is a solar quartz, fifth, the handset, six, and this is the most important one for me. It is the case shape. Despite the strong resemblance, it is a predominantly circular watch. The circular bezel and dial set the stage for the locks to grow from. Compared to the fluidity of the case, off the sub, it is clear that Psycho has started designing this watch with a basic circular shape and then added other elements here and there. I will get into more details in my full review of this watch so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a beat. One downfall of this watch is in its bracelet. You get a hollow end link, a stamp clasp, plus a cheaply made but serviceable dive extension. But luckily, there is no cloudy crystal, no rust, no sticky crown, and plenty of lube. Despite the subpar bracelet, it is a much better product than the one-to-one -one clone in my opinion, because I don't have to deal with the defects and the stigma that comes with a one-to-one -one clone. In the end, the question you will have to ask yourself before buying a one-to-one -one Rolex clone is whether you want to deal with an inferior product with no warranty, a rip-off design, a potentially unserviceable movement, or would you rather get a respectable homage like this one? Or even better, you can even save up to buy the real thing. Why not? The choice is yours. For me, I'll take an homage in my definition any day. Never a one-to-one -one clone or even a regular clone. Sound off your thoughts in the comment section below and let us know. Stay tuned for my next review or a head-to-head. -head. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. Follow me on Instagram for cool watch photos and just come along with me on my watch collecting journey. See you next time. Peace.